Tonight on Boston EMS. Two car accident, teenager on a bike was hit. Oh. I haven't seen a scene like that in a long time. Oh. Holy Let's oh, go Scott right here. He's got one shoe on. Dude, he's going to pull I can have a cruiser come and give you a ride to a shelter. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like the police. To roll over fully involved, a female under a train. Stop, 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 stop. What's going on here? This is my rolling office. Dude, what are you doing? It's another night in Boston. Fire department says it's a rollover fully involved. Car hit a tree, more of the cars are on fire, the fire's getting bigger, they're still pulling people out of the car. I see smoke up there, I can't see the car by the engine, so this could be really bad. Uh, I'm going fire. Anyway, use the occupants. Yeah. You were in the car. Uh, 21-year-old male driver fell asleep at the wheel. Restrained. Self-extricated. Oh, he's got no complaints. He's got a nosebleed. He's got no markings. He's got a good radio pulse. No mad history. No allergies. All right, right? thanks. Stand up, my friend. You, you in the car by yourself? Yes. He's got one. He's got a nosebleed or something. The, the BLS is pulling up over here. With a rollover motor vehicle accident, there's one or two extremes. They're either out before you get there walking around with minor injuries, or they're entrapped and in really bad shape. It seems like there's no happy medium. When a car flips over and catches on fire, the occupants, for the most part, the DOA, or they've got some major trauma. He's up, he's walking, he's talking to me. He's got a nosebleed, you know, they'll take him to the hospital. The car's demolished. He's, I don't know how he got out of it, it's upside down. He got out before it caught on fire, I guess. What he said to me, he smelled smoke. And he got out as quick as he could. He just won the lottery. I don't even know if he realizes it yet. But no, there's nothing for us to do. We're out of here. I'm getting out of this traffic. It's okay. 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 Mike McNeil. A true EMT of the year. He not only takes care of humans, he takes care of animals. You see that? That's why Mike's EMT of the year. Let me show Mike why he's EMT of the year every year. And I'm allergic to cats. Yep. <laughs> Just open the garage. Yeah, I got you. It's really important to have a good partner and someone that you can rely on. We got each other's backs so something's not going well. Yo, this is, this is Mike's hair gel. He's like, shh. Put it up into the Gumby. We go in these situations with the police, the code 99s or whatever, you know, that's when hostage situation, people shooting, stabbing. You gotta be able to know somebody's gonna watch your back. But just two of us, you never know, you know, We're going anywhere. Somebody might wanna hurt us. I would want my family to get the, the treatment that we provide to every patient. We treat everybody like their family. Right. Every call, every time, no matter what, no matter who's having a bad day. Ambulance three, Boston. Three with police on route, EDP two in Dorchester. We're in route two, and the mostly disturbed person, 65 year old female, paranoid and yelling. You're always Larry, going with your guard up. Nine times out of ten, you use your verbal judo. And, you know, you can talk people down, and most people will listen to you. You notice we don't use a GPS, and I don't need a map. I don't need that. All the new people put in all the stuff and they play with the computer. I don't need all that junk. And I passed the address after I talked trash. <laughs> it's right here. We're here. EDPs are very unpredictable. The years I've been here, I've seen, like, you'll be talking to someone, and the next thing you know, they're snapping, they're hitting you, they're punching you. <sighs> she looks a bit agitated by the commotion. I do need him because I got to pay my lecture bill. I want to see the president, too. You want to see the president, too? Sometimes, you know, you go there and somebody's as calm as me and you. The next minute, they're like, let me out of this truck. You guys know what I'm saying? You got to figure out how you're going to get me back home. Oh, guys, we're going to work on that. We're going to work on that. So EDP calls are uh, mostly disturbed patients. Uh, 
I enjoyed doing the calls for the most part. Well, oh, can we do this man first? No. This particular case was interesting. She was difficult. She was a real management issue. But you gotta put your feet up first. I'm gonna show you. I'm Come on, work with phone. work with well, us. Just work with us. I'm not, I told you, I'm not gonna we'll give you a needle. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. We need you to work with us for yeah. a second, okay? Just they got my mass ID. Put my, your feet my, up here. The patient has me. She does have a pretty extensive medical history too that can cause some altered mental status. She really wants to go Boston Medical. No. Has she been there before? No. I mean, You're a liar. You're trying to kill me again with a needle. I'm needle. trying to kill you with tufts? Yes, and tell her I'm going to tell you to go to It did what? It's a bit of sight. Well, when a daughter came to the door, it didn't make things any better. That was a poor choice on my part to have her come to the back. That made things worse. Uh, okay, we'll what? take her to Boston. She's lying. She's not being a medical juice. That is completely fine. Because you see what I mean, though? She stepped over. How you let me? She got a history of liver problems. And sometimes um, toxins from the liver can go up into your brain and make you act a little erratic. Okay. Trying to get that lady to focus and get her, get her out the house. Mike did a good job. You know, Mike got that gift to gab. We got her out without restraining her, having to touch her. So if that's always a good day. You can get the patient to walk out, get on the bed. I got A lot of times, patients like that will, will focus all their negative attention towards the person who's most active and trying to move things along. I, I feel like in this case, that was me. But calm and patience usually win out. Uh, my training's important in, in all aspects of the job, but the most important part of this is, 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 is my street spots and my personality. Saturday. It's hit and miss here in High Park. Sometimes we have slow nights, sometimes we don't. Today, I am expecting... You know, I don't know. It's always, it's unpredictable out here. Is that what you're gonna look like when you, <laughs> you get gray? Yes, he was in a wedding yesterday, and he actually cleans up well. I was a groomsman. That's me and my godson. My baby and I took a selfie. Where's my phone? Look at wow, my baby. Cool She's like my mini me, but she looks nothing like me. Ambulance 18, Boston. Truman Parkway in Hyde Park for the injury, 1448. Hey, Truman. Go ahead and route one more. 40-year-old female injury after a fall. This is our new truck. We just got this truck. It only has 1,800 miles on it. And it smells brand new. It's a really good smell to it. Probably won't last that long because it's not like we're a flower shop. We take some pretty horrible calls to the hospital. Stenches. All right, we're pulling up, and I think she's in a car, so that's a good sign. Hello. Hello. Oh, what happened? Across the street, my foot. My bad foot. Okay, got, got caught. Got caught into the can, and I fell, and I banged my head. Okay. Any pain here? No. No pain. No. She was just sitting in the street, and I felt bad. You know, I wanted to make sure she was all right. I want to hear. My pond is wicked strong, OK? Was so this the can? Yes. That's the can that went up in my push. Wow. Yeah, it's swollen. It could even be dislocated. But they'll give you an x-ray. I feel like a jerk. Why do you feel like a jerk? Because I fell. Yeah, but you know what? I didn't even know the but can the, was listen, there. Listen, listen, listen. Do you think people go around, oh, let me just drop myself on the ground and hurt no. my hand all the time? It's called no. an accident, whether you I didn't want her to get upset. Obviously, something triggered her to get upset. That's something. Don't get don't get yourself all excited. You're in the ambulance. You're doing the right thing. You're going to go to the hospital. They're right. going to check you out, yeah. right? Yeah. I was able to just kind of be mean, you know? Like, if anything, I, I, can, I can turn somebody around when they're upset and just be funny, and laughter is great medicine. Yeah. See, you're already forgetting about the pain. Yes, I am. And you're making me feel better. And you're making me happy. <laughs> <laughs> so sunny, I got. I have to put my shades on. She's a pretty girl. He's a handsome, He's a man. handsome man right there. That's right. Pretty girl, pretty boy. Right. This could have been prevented. But we have that can, and it's never going to offend anyone again. It's in the trash, where it belongs. Strawberry flavor, by the way, strawberry. 18, we're all set, thank you. What is this guy doing? Hold on a second. Stop, 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 stop. You're gonna hurt yourself. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. All right. You're gonna push it? Hurt yeah, yourself. We're, we're gonna push with the ambulance? No, no. Oh, push. Like this. Oh, God, I hope he pushes the brake. Paul and I did a good deed today. 
We pushed an elderly couple out of a, a busy street. Paul, how do you feel about that? You don't, we don't do that very often. That's our uh, good deed for the day, that's what I'll say. Break, break. Oh my God. Park. That is good. Next on Boston EMS. Talbot in New England for a traumatic arrest. Two car accident, teenager on a bike was hit. Somebody's doing CPR. Get Sahara from the back of your neck. just be a removal from the police. Maybe this person's just taking a nap. Who knows? Nothing? All right. Thank you. Bye. There's nothing. But I'll turn around. It could be further down the street. Oh, it's probably this guy right here. 18. Look at He's got one shoe on. You all set? Are you good? Oh, because somebody called about you. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. So you don't need an ambulance or anything like that? No. Do you need, like, a ride to a shelter? I can get you a ride to a shelter. Yeah, can you give me a ride to Father Bill? No, I can't give you a ride to, to a shelter in Quincy, but I can have a cruiser come and give you a ride to a shelter in Boston. Somewhere down the lines, maybe something went wrong for him. But he's young enough that he can totally get his life back. Dude, you have no shoes on. It's going to pour. No, I'm making I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to hook you up with a pair of shoes right now. They're going to be man-made. OK? Sit up here. Come sit up here. We'll make you some shoes. No, I didn't take any pictures. Oh, here it is. It's me. Finish line at the Boston Marathon. Going over the police barrier. And that's right, they call me Super Susan. Trained as an EMT or a paramedic, there's a lot of things that we that we can do. And there's a lot of things that we're able to do that you hope you never have to do. But if you have to, you have to. Uh, four, paramedic three. Southbound, the expressway for motor vehicle collision with injury. Two car accident, teenager on a bike was hit. Somebody's doing CPR. Keep the hair up on the back of your neck. Somebody was flying through here. Oh. I'm gonna set up in here, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll get him. Uh, yeah, I get a BLS guy. Oh. You're on the board backwards? It's my car, though. Your car's a white car? How old are you, my friend? 26. Oh. I know your leg hurts. We're going to lift you up, my friend. OK. Oh. Oh. Did he kill someone, did he? I don't know, buddy. Oh, I know he did, didn't he? You were driving or the passenger? Oh, I was the passenger. Ow. He was the passenger. I said his friend was driving, and there's a teenage kid the away on the scene. Yeah. Do you have any medical problems? Try to keep your head straight. He's leaning on this point. Yeah, so bad. Where's it hurt the most? This one, but then it hurts yet. Too. All right, with your I right leg. Both legs, but this one isn't. Where in your right leg does it hurt? Yeah. It looks like your right leg's definitely busted and probably your left femur. It's got to be tight because once we're moving, uh -huh. we don't want it to okay. bounce. Okay, but it hurts. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. What's the matter? What's the matter? Where's it hurt? Where's it hurt? Where's it hurt? Where, where? Right there, my know, leg. Because you tightened it. It's oh, my done. God. Trust me. Oh, when God. we're moving, you're going to want that, OK? We're going to give you some medicine. It's going to keep you from bouncing when we go down the street. Oh, my God. I don't even have health insurance. Don't worry about it. OK, nice and easy. Thank you. I'm standing. <laughs> this could be the new Air Jordan though. Right, they could be. I walk everywhere. I, I, I BMX and longboard. I walk. I go through. I do all the things the world has to offer. I wasn't listening up front. Where are your shoes? I'm coming up with a new prototype called Hobo Moccasins. 
So I'm trying to like you know, use the material. Yeah. So you're homeless? Uh, sort of. I just, you know, I jump around. I do a lot of camping, you know? Yeah. Maybe he's embarrassed. Maybe he's afraid to reach out for help. Maybe he doesn't want people to to judge him even more. All right, thanks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, see you later. Cool. I'm just glad that we were able to help him and that, you know, it wasn't an overdose. And maybe he does walk everywhere. Maybe he is trying to make a prototype called Hobo Moccasins. Interesting character. We run into a lot of interesting characters, so uh, I'm happy we could help him out. Those are those are awesome. Yeah. I'm Don't forget the small people here when you make it big, okay? <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. So what happened? I don't know. Were you driving on top or you were driving down Norwell? driving down Norwell. Norwell. You crossed over? I told him to pull over and let me drive because he's driving like a Was he flying? Yep. He was going so, so fast. So did somebody hit you or did you hit a car? He hit them. He hit a car? He hit them from behind, man. They were in front of you? Yes. It wasn't like you T-boned or no. I told him to pull over and let me drive. And he sped up like a and would not stop. I was like begging him to stop, please, please, begging him. And he smashed it to everyone. No more. Oh. Sorry. Your friend got out of the car on his own? He crawled out the window. He crawled out the window. I don't know where he went. I didn't see him. I saw other people in the other car. There's a kid in the street. We might have to try one more spot. Go to sleep on me, brother. Stay away. You're gonna find an IV in a minute. We're gonna give you some medicine. Okay. BMC, this is Boston Paramedic. You're two three two. Audio copy. We're about to your facility. We're about two minutes out. We have a 26-year-old gentleman. Was the unrestrained passenger? He states the vehicle is gonna open a tip dip on his right side. Yeah. Lower extremity. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, that probably it mean, usually means that there's something wrong with one of the dips. Bye, Mommy. Mommy, be back. This rose is so bumpy, it's causing her a lot of pain. Who's Daniel? You got, you got killed? Or Where at? I'm at a pee. Where? That shot. That's my daughter's father. Sorry to hear that. Happened in the middle of the day, around 4 o'clock, right? Yeah. I was there. Yeah. I couldn't believe it when she told me that her boyfriend was shot in that shooting. I was I was on that call. I, I was one of the first people at the crime scene. I, 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 thought, he, I thought he was going to make it. And uh, yeah, we did everything we could. We got there quick. We got from there to BMC quick. I'm so sorry for your loss. I really am. No question. I still think that he's out of town. He's gonna come back, but it just hurt my daughter. I feel. No kids. No kids are supposed to go through that. I'm really sorry for you, love. I really am. That's terrible. Every time I talk about it, I cry. Uh, it's, it's healthy though. Yeah. That's healthy. We see the immediate actions and, and the ripple effect of the trauma that happens in the city, but it's not too often that we see the after effects of it. How's that heat feel in your back? Helped a little bit? Shootings aren't all that common during the middle of the day. We got there quick and uh, he was alive the whole time talking. Um, critical, but awake, conscious and alert. Yeah, usually when we get people to the hospital, kind of take it for granted, I guess, that when they go up to the operating room, they're going to walk out. I had no idea that he died until just now. <laughs> I think her tears are just feeling like she could share her grief with someone who was there. Just for my slight involvement in the call, it gives us a connection. Three days a week. Twins will go next year. I gotta pay six thousand dollars to my daughter to go to kindergarten. And then on top of it, they want three hundred dollars for books and supplies. My wife says she can't even read. <laughs> they come by every once in a while. They like to see the animals. They come to see the animals. You know, it breaks up the day. You know, I get to see them. I work a lot. If I work doubles or whatever, or if Lauren's at school, I won't see him during the day. So I get to see. Him. I miss him. I come to work. I miss him. You want to feel your mouth? You want to go up there and put the headphones on? Thanks, Dad. Can I drive? Yeah. Alright, I think it's it next year. Go ahead. It's nice to have a visit from them. They like to play in the ambulance, make a leave, they go into an emergency. Cameron, where are you going? I don't know. Well, they know the ambulance. They tell you I help people. If somebody has a flag, you put them in there. I put them in there for what? If they get a boo boo? Yeah. And then what do I do to them? Put them in the medical bed. Put them in the medical bed? It's busy. It's busy at home. I love your outfit, Kim. <laughs> I'm with them home during the day, and, and then I come to work. Some days it's fine. Other days I can't wait to get to work. Ryan, we'll be back in like 10 minutes, all right? You got him? Oh, yeah. You got him? Yeah. Yeah. You, got him? You, you got him? You got him for 10 minutes? Yeah. Get the leash. <laughs> you come to work and I take care of people that are shot in the head or whatever. Some days that's easier than dealing with the three of them at home. They're my kids, my heart. I love them. So it's good when they come by and see me. Tell them what? P3 Calendar the Street, just the number. I gotta go. It's all right. 36 year old male, not breathing, he's got a history of drug abuse. He's unconscious. P3, we have to cancel. So the BLS crew's there and they cancel this. Nobody wants to go to the hospital with us. So that fatal 
that crazy car crash and the teenage kid was minding his business on the side of the road that died at the scene. There's a memorial up here. I think he was there with his bike, so I noticed last week there was flowers, but today I noticed there's a bike there, too. And the driver's only walks away from the scene. They got him, though. They got him at his house at 3 o'clock that morning or something. Kid, innocent kid's dead. We're getting there, breaking the truck in. But until we get the big bad one where the truck looks like a hot mess in the back, when you actually have to take the stretcher out and mop the floors and clean the blood off the ground and the ceiling, and that's when we break in the truck. 18 Boston. 18. Factory Street at Jackson Street. But a pedestrian hit or an animal hit? They don't know yet. They're investigating. So we're responding on a call right now. Um, a train hit something. We don't know if it's an animal that the train hit or a person. The Accela train goes pretty fast. So if that train is going to hit someone, most of the time it's just parts just everywhere. This is definitely an adrenaline rush, not knowing like what you're going to go find, if you're going to find anything. You know, you have police officers on scene that have never seen something like that. and. The gag factor starts to play a role for them. It's a full moon. 18, we have uh, Boston Fire. I'll let you know when uh, Amtrak is on scene. I don't see Oh, OK, you want to stop there? I would like to pull up a little bit more. Get over yourself. Yeah, that way. They don't have any. So this is, like, the worst part is we don't know if they actually hit a person. We don't know if somebody was walking the tracks. We don't know if there was an animal. We have no idea what this train hit between here and 700 yards down that way and the only way that we can investigate is when they shut the track down and walk the 700 yards <laughs> so if this person has a chance probably lost it right now so this is like the worst part is we have no idea what this train hit between here and 700 yards down that way. We don't know if they actually hit a person. We don't know if somebody was walking the tracks. We don't know if there was an animal. We have no idea. It's an unusual circumstance with a lot of different agencies out here. We're just going to go down the three tracks. The report was the engineer thought he struck something 600 to 700 feet before he got to the station. So if we think someone's been hit by the train or by a train, it's a full court press. Everybody comes out, everybody gets together, we all search. We can't miss something this big. Great. We all got together, we formed a line, we took our flashlights out. Everybody looked left, everybody looked right. Oh, I thought I just saw something move. Huh? That just got hit. That's a fresh hit, right That's there. a fresh, That's a fresh kill. Uh, Make you clean, boss. Ah, yeah. What the? I think he's the one. Maybe that was the big thump. Is this it? We good? I don't know. We gonna keep going? They said 600 feet. We've done three times that. I think right now it's safe to say it was just the possum and then fresh roadkill right there. I'm thankful that that's what it was. Good guy right there. Took him for the team. R.I.P. R.I.P. I'm going to end the night with I'm very thankful it was just an animal. If it was an actual person, I think it would have been a very gruesome scene. Those trains go really, really fast. That possum took one for the team. The only thing I have to say to possums, you need to stop playing dead. Because this time it did not work in your advantage. And uh, I think we're good. I'm going home now. The one on the left is from my current horse. I don't know if they're lucky or not, but They've been here for a while. You have to keep them upside down like that so the luck doesn't run out. So here we go. P3810, port of cardiac disorder, Dorchester. <laughs> P3 North.
50-year-old male with chest pain. People come with some type of chest pain complaint. A lot of times there's nothing really acute that we see there, but given the age, if they're older and they got some risk factors, we'll treat it until they prove otherwise. Whatever reason, the guy was having an anxiety attack. He said he had chest pain, it went down his arm. You could tell he was a little anxious, looked like he was breathing a little fast. Nice and easy, slow your breathing down, slow down, okay? We're gonna take care of you, but you gotta talk to me so I can help you. Slow your breathing down, slow down, slow down. You're working yourself up into a tizzy. In some people, you can control them, you get them to calm down. Other people like him, it takes a little bit longer. The best thing you can do to help yourself here is get control of your breathing. Hold your breath just for two seconds. Hold it, hold it, and let it out slow. Good, 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 let it out slow. You gotta keep your left arm still, okay? Don't move your arm here, buddy. He's got tiny veins, so it's hard to find a vein. In case it's cardiac, it's nice to get an IV in him. He's stabbing me. One more try on the IV, okay? Give him a second chance here. Not, then I'll have to do it. I put IVs in cats. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, no. I you used to understand. I... That is about as difficult as it gets. Even though he's a, you know, normal adult, um, no, what she said was cat lady, but she won't admit it. Yeah. Cat lady? I'm not a cat lady. I have just one cat. To be a cat lady, you have to have a lot more than one cat, so that exempts me from that uh, title. I feel better now, so I think you guys can let me go, because I feel better now. <laughs> That's good. I think the turning boy was talking about the cats and calling Katie a cat lady. That seems to be where he calmed down. It would have been nice to get an idea, you know? The thing is, he'll go in the hospital, he's calm now, the nurse will be home, they'll pull one in like that. And he'll wake up a new man. Next on Boston EMS. Now we're going for a person with dementia that, like, forced themselves into a house. This is my house. We're uh, a little bit on edge today. The, uh, he's a little bit more uneasy. Are you fine? Today is going to be like 85, hot, hazy city weather. So it's going to be nice out here today. See how he comes in, look. Mike on time as usual. That's your man, 50 grand. I can't believe it. Wait, I've never been late. I've never been late before in my life. I can't believe it. His mama said he came out late. He was two hours late when he was born. Now we're going to Dorchester for a 99-year-old female complaining of feet pain. That's what it says in the call. Feet pain. All right, don't you guys have anything? Free, I need to preempt you. Oh, we're being preempted. Miss Blue and River by the bank for a man down. Three, Blue and River. Now we're going to Blue and River for a man down. Ain't nobody out here. They said at the Bank of America, right? Yeah, it's... Anybody in the bank? Oh, yeah, your man's in the bank laying down asleep. What's up, man? Help you up. How you living? You all right? I'm okay, I'm okay. That's my beer. Oh, well, you better drink the rest of that, man. I'm all right, I'm fine. I'm okay. Right. Okay. Don't forget your beer, man. I'm all right. Still reserved, baby. Dollar 20 a can. He got to get it in early. That's his breakfast. Yeah, he do. He walk in the street. All right. Still reserved. Setting a great example for the kids on the bus. <laughs> Too early for this. Hyde Park, Cotter to Soda at 2028. Hamlet's 18, Boston. Yep, we have it. On route. 98 year old male having chest pain. I think I know who he is. I've been to his house before. Um, he's a great guy. He doesn't speak any English. I speak Spanish, so hopefully by the time I get there, I can get a clearer picture. He's probably one of the oldest patients I've ever treated. He's going to be 99 in August. El tiene problema del corazón. No. Let me ver el bracito, okay? He's hypertensive, but he doesn't have a history of cardiac problems, but he was, according to his family, having some chest pain. Can you point to where the pain is? Is she able to do that? Señaleme a mí, ¿dónde es que le duele a usted en el cuerpo? ¿Dónde es que te duele? Right there is where it hurts. 
Well, we're gonna take him to the, the hospital. Um, the family says that he has just been different the past few hours, um, not presenting as himself. He's usually wicked spunky, like wicked with it and like funny and it's great to see him, but it's also sad to see him because he wasn't himself who he normally is. Ooh. 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 He started to pep up a little bit when we got outside, so maybe he just needed a little bit of fresh air and change of scenery. Ooh. 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 I do want to take his temperature, though, because he felt hot in the house. 100.3. That could explain why he is presenting to be a little bit more lethargic than normal. So she's just telling me that he had that he had the flu last week. So maybe this is just left over. Maybe he maybe he didn't fully recuperate. Maybe he's starting to get sick again. The last time I, I saw him at home, um, he asked me to go dancing. Tu la salsa y merengue. Pero no lo puedes, no tienes fuerza ahora. Pero cuando tengas fuerza vamos a bailar. Okay. I said to him if he gets better and for his birthday I'll go dancing with him and he wants to do a little salsa dancing. ¿Cuál es el secreto de, de vivir tantos años? ¿Qué es lo que tú haces? Tener suerte. suerte. He says to be lucky, to have luck. He has luck on his side. He's, he says that the only one that knows when he's going to get taken from this earth is God, and he's lucky. He's got luck on his side, and he's always happy. So I think he'll be fine. Boston EMS will be right back. Now we're going for another call. Sounds like it's a person with dementia that like forced themselves into a house. The scene is secure, the cops are there, and we're gonna go evaluate this person. We try to determine this person's mental status. Did they leave the hospital? Were they at like a, cause there's a rehab center right by where we're going? Or does this person have half his family searching for him? He just walked into the living room and said, this is my house. <laughs> where does he live? He lives right next door. If he's home, do you usually get worried if he's going to like leave oh, and we, wander when around? He's inside, we usually lock the doors. OK, all right. It's a scary thing for the family members to have to witness their loved ones completely not even know who they are. You're not even going to. Thank you. How old are you? How old am I? Yeah. How old do you think I look? 25. 25? I'm 25. <laughs> You sure? Nope. Oh, come on. I'm 33. 33? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yep. <laughs> oh. I don't think it's enjoyable to have dementia. I've seen a lot of people with dementia and Alzheimer's that are very confused and go back to just thinking they're like 25 or don't even recognize their family at all and become very violent, very hostile. Uh, yeah, sure. We're uh, a little bit on edge lately. Yeah. He's a little bit more and more getting uh, uneasy and have to keep a constant eye on him, yeah. Do you flirt with women? Women? Yeah. No, I am too old. You're too old for that? <laughs> He's fine. He just had a, a moment where he literally thought that the the house next to his was his. Come on, Mama's waiting. Yeah. Mama's waiting with food. <laughs> where is Mama? That yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the neighbors know him, and I think they know that he has dementia. You're a nice daughter, man. Thank you. I tried me. So I don't think they were that concerned when he came into the house. But I, I can't imagine being at home sitting in your living room and having some complete stranger who's barefoot walk into your house and say, this is my house. This is my house. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's your house, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. I love you, honey. I love you, too. Everybody. <laughs> no, okay. You're, you're ugly. I'm ugly. <laughs> <laughs> So he told me I was 25, or I, he thought I looked like I was 25, which I'm not. I'm, like, so in my 30s. But then he said I was ugly. So he ruined any chance he ever had with me. But he was a, he was a fun guy, even though he said I was ugly. It's fine. I'm not going to let my feelings get hurt. But I did. On the next Boston EMS. One person's pinned. Dude, what are you doing? 
before we were on scene. What car were you in? The overcharged one? Two patients, one critical. The person that was in your car? She's worse than you. Ambulance 11, pedestrian struck. So what actually happened? And tomorrow night...